The Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, the VTSAX, and Vanguard 500 Index Fund, the VFIAX, are no doubt the two biggest and most popular index funds in the world. With over a trillion dollars and $700 billion in assets under management respectively, they are a force to be reckoned with in the investing world. But one of the most common questions many of us ask is, if we had to choose one, which one would it be? Which one is the best if we can even make that decision? Hi, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tay from Financial Tortoise, where we learn to grow our wealth slow and steady. In today's video, we're going to deep dive into the two of the most popular index funds in the market, the VTSAX and the VFIAX, and to see which one might be the best for you. A spoiler alert, I prefer the Total Stock Market Index Fund. All right, let me give you a brief overview of the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, also better known as VTSAX. VTSAX tracks the CRSP US Total Market Index, which aims to replicate the entire US total stock market, including large cap, mid cap, small cap, and micro cap stocks. At the time of this video, it represents approximately 4,000 US based companies. The top holdings in this fund are Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon. Not a surprise given these are currently the biggest companies in the US. It has an expense ratio of 0.04%, which means if you have $10,000 invested in Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, you're essentially paying $4 for Vanguard to manage its fund for you. In addition, it has a minimum investment of $3,000. If you don't have $3,000 to invest, an ETF is a good option to kick off your investing journey. The ETF equivalent of VTSAX is VTI, Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF, and it has an expense ratio of 0.03%. You can even convert your VTI over to VTSAX once you reach the minimum level of $3,000. Its average annual total return in the past 10 years has been 12.4%. To put this in perspective with annual compounding, if you had put in $10,000 10 years ago into VTSAX, it would have grown to approximately $32,000 today. Not bad for buying and holding. All right, now let's talk about Vanguard's 500 index fund. Vanguard and the industry's original index fund created in 1976. The VFIAX is the latest version updated in the year 2000. VFIAX seeks to track the investment performance of the Standard & Poor's 500 index, an unmanaged benchmark representing the US large cap stocks. More specifically, 500 largest companies in the United States. At the time of this video, it represents exactly 505 US based companies. The top holdings in this fund are Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon, identical to VTSAX. And same as VTSAX, it has an expense ratio of 0.04%, and the same minimum investment of $3,000. Again, if you don't have $3,000 to invest, an ETF is a good option to kick off your investing journey. The ETF equivalent of VFIAX is VOO, Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, which also has an expense ratio of 0.03%. The Vanguard 500 index fund's average annual total returns in the past 10 years has been 12.75%. To put this in perspective with annual compounding, if you had put in $10,000 10 years ago into VFIAX, it would have grown to approximately $33,000 today. Slightly more than VTSAX given the higher returns. With the mechanics out of the way, let me talk about the two personal reasons why I prefer the VTSAX versus the VFIAX. And I want to emphasize the personal part. Both are excellent funds, and you honestly can't go wrong with either one of them. I just personally like VTSAX, so let me share with you why. The biggest notable difference between these two funds, as you can guess, is the composition. As I mentioned earlier, the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund encompasses a wider universe of stocks than the Vanguard 500 Index Fund. 4,000 in VTSAX versus 500 in VFIAX. But that's not the primary reason I prefer VTSAX, because in the big picture, the difference is actually not as great as it seems. The 500 stocks in Vanguard 500 Index Fund makes up about 80% of the total US equities market capitalization, so there is significant overlap between VTSAX and VFIAX. With that said, the approximate 20% of market capitalization that is found only in the total stock market index fund does provide greater diversification because of the presence of smaller stocks. And historically, there have been times when small stocks have outperformed large cap stocks, most often during times of high inflation. However, we must be careful not to try to predict the timing on these, because if the market history tells us anything, no one can predict the future. Benjamin Graham, one of the most famous investors, has said, If I had noticed anything over these 60 years in the Wall Street, it is that people do not succeed in forecasting what's going to happen to the stock market. But despite the similarities, a key factor that makes me favor the VTSAX over VFIAX is this. The fact that the S&P 500 is not a purely cap-determined index, though the ongoing recycling of new and old companies within the S&P 500 index is most likely automated with computer programs, the initial criteria for what companies are included and excluded are set by real live human beings. A committee of economists and analysts at Standard & Poor's maintains the index and may exclude companies for a variety of reasons, including that a company is no longer considered financially viable as a result of ongoing losses, that the company's stock is not liquid enough, 
or because the stock throws off the index's sector balance. The case of Tesla helps to illustrate the impact of company selection process in the index. Currently, Tesla is easily included as one of the 10 largest companies in the United States, with a market cap of close to $600 billion. So it's easy to assume that Tesla has always been a component of all large cap US stock indexes like the S&P 500. However, would you be surprised to know that Tesla wasn't added to the S&P 500 until December of 2020? Yes, Tesla was a much smaller company several years ago, but as of January 2013, Tesla's market cap was still around $4.3 billion, above the minimum market capitalization requirement of $4 billion for the S&P 500 at the time. But it didn't meet the profitability criteria set by the committee. Therefore, it wasn't added to the index until December of 2020, 10 years after it went public. On the other hand, Tesla was added to the CRSP US total market index in June 2010, immediately after it went public. And the CRSP US total market index is the index that VTSAX tracks. Unlike the S&P 500, the CRSP index do not have a profitability requirement for new addition to the index. The CRSP US total market index tracks pretty much all publicly available equities that meet the minimum liquidity requirements and therefore equates to approximately 4,000 companies at the time of this video. I do want to clarify that this is to say the S&P 500 index is a worse index than the total market index. Because as I mentioned earlier, the impact difference between the two are quite minimal, especially when we compare their returns as we'll do in the next section. But emotionally, I can't help myself but feel more secure with the idea of holding a fund that tracks a broader index like the total market and includes more than 4,000 companies. All right, with that said, let's take a look at the specific returns between these two funds to see if we can discern any performance difference. Do you want the short answer? Not that much. When we compare the past three year difference in performance, VFIX has a higher return at 10.18% versus VTSIX's 9.67%. The variance tightens a bit when we go back 10 years. VFIX returned at 12.75% versus VTSIX's 12.4%. But when we go back more than 20 years, all the way back to the year 2000, VTSIX outperforms VFIX, 7.25 versus 6.93%. Why the variation in returns with time? Take a look at the following calendar periodic table of investment returns. It ranks from top to bottom which asset classes perform best at each respective year. Can you discern any trend here? Probably not. You see times when large equity caps did well, you see times when small cap equities did well, and you even see times when real estate did well. What this table highlights is the inconsistency in the performance of different asset classes each year. Just because large cap equity fund did well in one year doesn't guarantee that it will continue to perform better than other asset classes the following year. And this is reflected in the performance of VFIX and VTSAX that we saw earlier. When small cap stocks outperform large cap stocks, VTSAX saw a slight edge. However, when large cap outperforms small cap, VFIX performs slightly better. To know when this will happen is akin to trusting a fortune teller. Warren Buffett said himself, we long felt that the only value of stock forecasters is to make the fortune tellers look good. And the correlation between these two funds is amazingly high, especially when we wind the clock back more and more. The long-term correlation between the S&P 500 and the total stock market index is 0.99. One is perfect correlation. What this means for me is that trying to make my decision based on past performance is a foolish effort. We don't know what the future holds. There is no way we'll ever know when VTSAX will outperform VFIX again or vice versa. Because when we try to predict the future, we're admitting to the fact that we want to market time and are looking to dance in and out of the market based on perceived trends. The only trend I'm aware of is the strength of the American economy and the American companies as a whole in the long run. Therefore, when I have a choice, I do prefer the broader market index and therefore VTSAX because it eliminates my inclination to look at the difference between large cap and small cap companies. Many hardcore advocates of VFIX argue that it's simple to supplement a large cap heavy VFIX fund with small cap and mid cap funds like the Vanguard Small Cap Index, VSMAX, and mid cap index, VIMAX. You get the added benefit of small cap and mid cap companies as well as the flexibility to control the allocation. However, my thought is this, why add more complexity to a portfolio when it might not make that much of a difference in the long run? With more funds, you need more accounts, and also you need to spend more time thinking about the right allocation between all these subcategories. I don't want to give myself room to second guess myself, because knowing me, if I had a choice, I know I would spend way too much time trying to optimize my large cap, mid cap, and small cap ratios. And at the end, without much to show for it. I think simplicity is one of the most underrated concepts in life. Therefore, I choose VTSAX because it owns all of them and makes my life super simple. With that said, again, in the big picture of things, both VTSAX and VFIX are excellent funds. 
And when I mean excellent, really excellent, the best of the best. You can't go wrong with either one of them. If we're to spend any more time on this to argue which one is better than the other, we are really splitting pennies. Broad bets on US stocks have generally been a good bet for investors, and therefore diversified index funds. Both the VTSIX and the VFIX stands a good chance at delivering great long-term results. So the big question shouldn't be VTSIX versus VFIX, but rather broad market passive index funds versus actively managed funds, or better yet, single stocks. You'll constantly be sold actively managed funds and single stocks because they make money for the investment firms and investment managers. Avoid them like the plague. Have a long-term horizon. Pick either the VTSAX or the VFIX and continually invest. Thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to learn more about VTSAX and VFIX more specifically, please check out my video here. Until next time, all the best.